Kept you waiting, huh? Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at Metal Gear Solid Tactic Espionage Action 4 Guns of the Patriots. And of course, this is the uh, grand finale, sort of, uh, to the Metal Gear Solid franchise, released back in, I believe, 2008 on the PlayStation 3. And this game was a very big deal when it came out. I remember a lot of people saying that it was the best looking game that was ever made at the time. Despite its fairly uh, muted colour scheme. But anyway, right here on the front cover, uh, we have some fantastic artwork of, artwork of Snake. I apologise for the reflections. Unfortunately, the black box makes it a little bit difficult. But anyway, uh, some fantastic artwork by the normal series artist. And I apologise, I actually don't know a lot about Metal Gear Solid, so uh, I honestly do not know who uh, does the artwork in the game. And of course we can see the Konami logo up there, uh, once a very different company to what they are now. And of course the Kojima uh, logo down there. The well, really the Foxhound logo in many ways, but uh, of course that came to be known more as his studio. Okay, so on the side here, we've got the old school Spider-Man 3 uh, logo there. A uh, little font logo, I guess I should say. And of course the normal Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots uh, spine. And uh, that was standard for early PS3 games, or at least many of them, uh, in uh, the Power Regions. And of course this game was rated MA15+, plus for strong violence and themes. This is of course the Australian version. Okay, so on the back here, of course, we've got Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, usual stuff. A legendary soldier, a final mission, the ultimate sacrifice. And uh, to this game's credit, it is certainly a conclusion, actually. Uh, I, from what I understand, uh, there wasn't really supposed to be any more Metal Gear after this. Or at least Kojima didn't really so much intend any continuation of the story. Okay, so we've got some screenshots showing off the game's fantastic graphics. And you can see, I mean, like looking at uh, Revolver Ocelot over there, I mean, the character models in this game were really something to behold at the time. Even now they still look fantastic, honestly. So of course we have epic stealth action, travel of the globe and infiltrate dangerous battlegrounds as Solid Snake in the final chapter of this legendary hero's life. Kind of spoiling the ending there in a way, but anyway. Uh, of course cinematic experience, which is basically what you expect every time you get into a Metal Gear game. Although I personally like the series more for its, uh, its actual gameplay rather than its story. And of course Metal Gear Online, which I believe is offline now. I'm sure it is actually. Uh, but of course it was a revolutionary online multiplayer game set in a Metal Gear Solid 4 universe. I'm going to see some fun stuff with that later on with the, uh, the manual. Okay, so inside here we have the Metal Gear Solid 4 disc and you can get a bit of a better look at the artwork free of reflections. Uh, so that looks very nice. You can actually see this is a UK version of the game. Uh, the game disc, I should say. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, Australia tends to be lazy like that. Uh, but you can see, of course, that's a uh, UK rating. Is there anything, uh, anything behind the disc? No, it just says Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, Tactical Espionage Action. Pretty sad stuff, and just a nice uh, red background. Okay, so if we... Hang on. <laughs> Doesn't want to come out, there we go. Oh, and of course we got the Kojima logos, uh, logo... Or rather, Kojima Studios logo over there. I apologise, it's uh, summer and it's a bit hot in here. <laughs> okay. So we have a really, really meaty manual here. And this is honestly uh, a fantastic part of the, uh, the package. Really the best part of the package. So we've got the usual age rating stuff. Again, this is for the UK, not Australia, which is always interesting. But it is a full colour manual, plenty of artwork. You can see we've got some great artwork there of Old Snake and Revol uh, Revolver Ocelot, uh, which looks awesome. Okay, Metal Gear Solid 4, usual stuff, setting up the 6-axis wireless controller. Ah, uh, the good old 6-axis. We've got plenty of screenshots and everything is in full colour. It's all stylized to kind of fit with the, uh, the Metal Gear Solid menus and the fonts and everything like that. Um, a lot of effort really went into this. You know, getting ready to play, mission briefing, new game. Uh, lots of cool stuff like, yeah, all, all, all pretty basic stuff honestly, but it's all presented in a very cool way I should say. Trolls, and uh, then we actually kind of get to uh, the HUD, and also Snake himself. So of course, you know, he's wearing the solid eye. Uh, you know, he can change stances. Uh, he has a melon next to him for some reason. <laughs> but okay, Solid went for a short phase around this time where it was really obsessed with melons. Um, you know, Rising when it was first re uh, revealed. Also, that was the centerpiece of the trailer was Raiden cutting up a melon. Okay, so we actually get a really cool little comic book here. 
And, uh, you know, in the not-too-distant future, on a tired battlefield, war has become routine. And we can see this great artwork of Snake there, and, you know, there's uh, Roy Campbell, uh, of course, uh, Colonel. Uh, there's Otacon, of course. I just got, sort of takes you through, uh, you know, the, the setup for the story. Which the game does as well, but it just kind of adds a lot of extra flair to the manual. You know, this really feels like it's made for collectors. And I love this stuff as well. You're in a combat zone now, stick. Keep your eyes peeled. Use the left stick to move yourself around. Use the right stick to adjust the camera angle. They always explain uh, that with the voice acting in the game as well. It's never sort of skirted around. It's a very fourth wall breaking element of the series. Which, which I honestly appreciate. Okay, so crouching and lying down and all that. But it basically just takes you throughout uh, sort of the early game with this comic and sort of explains all of the various mechanics through it. Otacon looking pretty damn cool there, actually. <laughs> the artwork of this is really nice. And honestly, I've never seen another uh, manual that really featured this level of uh, detail. Uh, or like this sort of consistent comic running throughout the whole thing. It's really, really nicely done. It shows that Konami was really sparing no expense, uh, at this point anyway, uh, for Metal Gear Solid 4. And I believe that they, the game was incredibly successful. Okay. So hanging from ledges and stuff. It's actually very Mario 64 in the way it shows Snake doing all the little actions as well. And of course, procuring items. I love that picture of old Snake holding up the briefcase. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, using his weapon and stuff like that. Now using the, uh, the Metal Gear Mark II, a remote mobile terminal. That's, uh, that's quite a fun little element of the game. Uh, but aside from that, it's, it's kind of basically just continues like this throughout, and it's it's a lot of fun, as I say, but uh, nothing too unusual. Our state gets spotted, of course, so it's got to explain how that all works. Uh, what happens if your life gauge drops to zero? CQC, of course. But it really is like a Metal Gear sequence that teaches you how to play the game via the manual. And that's, that's just really fantastic. And you can see we get all these diagrams showing the various CQC maneuvers that Snake can do. Uh, which I'm honestly terrible at. <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm pretty terrible at the entire Metal Gear Solid franchise, in my opinion, but I do like, uh, sort of, you know, stealth games like this. Okay. Now, of course, we get introduced to Drebin, who's the merchant in this game, and his creepy monkey. Very creepy monkey. Okay. And it basically just teaches you about, you know, gun laundering, buying weapons and ammo, customizing weapons, and all that good stuff. Okay, so I think we're just about at the end here. Oh, and of course the, uh, the rebel factions that, uh, or the Musha, I should say, uh, that can start to see you as an ally. They're thanks for the help! With the love hearts in the air. I, I love the whole style of this. It's, it's a lot of fun to read. What do I do if I keep dying? The enemy keeps spotting me. The enemy is blocking the way forward. And again, this really helps new players. I think, I think Metal Gear Solid 4, while the story was really complicated by this point, I think they were trying to bring in a lot of new fans as well. Uh, but and then we get onto Metal Gear Online and we've actually got a color comic for this one. And it's, it is really quite funny. So this is Metal Gear Online. Hey! You, you a rookie? That gear, yeah? Yeah, you must be a rookie. <laughs> Wait. And then he sees this guy and he says, Sergeant! You, you were my student, yes sir. You idiot, I told you to start off in the auto-matching lobby. <laughs> so it's completely fourth wall breaking. Damn it, it's starting. I'm hooking in. What? This rule is Team Deathmatch. The team that defeats the most opponents wins. I just love it. Today's opponent is Clan Shinobi, the strongest of the clans. So this is basically just like people online taking it way too seriously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, a really nicely drawn comic book. I love this art style. And, uh, you know, well, I hear MGS4 characters will be joining the battle too. That's gotta be one hell of a fight. Because we can see Snake and Meryl and uh, a few others that I can't really recognize by silhouette. <laughs> so then you kind of get a battlefield do's and don'ts about uh, Metal Gear Online. But of course, all of this is pretty irrelevant nowadays. And uh, continuing that, the path to Metal Gear Online, we actually uh, have an ex explanation of how to set it all up. And we have this cute little sprite art of Otacon, which, uh, I don't know if this is the same sprite art from uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, but uh, I love it anyway, it, it looks great. You're ready to play MGO Online. Okay. 
Oh, uh, and of course we got some cute little sprite art of uh, the Metal Gear Mark II as well. I love Otacon. <laughs> and then finally we have uh, a awesome looking render of uh, basically the main cadre of, uh, of villains in this game, or sort of the, uh, the, the, the bosses, I guess you'd rather say. Uh, again, whose names I have trouble remembering. I was about to call him Launch Octopus, but no, that's Mega Man X. <laughs> but uh, I haven't honestly played this game in quite some time. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. The only other thing we guess is this right here. So... Old Dog, Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid 4. Again, a great detailed render of a character. And uh, it's just a, one of the old-fashioned ads for the guidebook. And, of course, the old guidebooks were really set up very nicely, but... Oh, and, of course, we got that great artwork of uh, Snake's sort of... His legs falling apart into a mess of characters and guns and uh, things like that, which is, again, a, a great piece of artwork. So, yes, oh, and a free trial! Download 12 sample pages at piggybackinteractive.com. They're without all good video game retail outlets. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, and you can see it actually does connect as well. The, uh, the, the divide though goes right through his eye. Ouch. <laughs> but anyway, that is your look at Metal Gear Solid 4 on the PlayStation 3. As I say, a uh, pretty fantastic package for a collector. The manual is really awesome. I certainly did not expect to be spending 13 minutes on this game, but anyway. I'm going to have uh, a bunch more unboxings coming up in the next uh, month or so, so uh, please stay tuned for that. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.